So two muffins were cooking in the oven and the one muffin said to the other, it's really hot in here. And the other muffin said, whoa, a talking muffin. <laughs> so my friend's 10 year old son tells that joke to all his friends, he thinks it's hilarious. My 16 year old boy just looked at me as if I was stupid. So funny at 10, not funny at 16, funny again at 40, whatever I am. Okay, well, uh, welcome to Shave and Butcher. I've been tagged by Chris from Another Cuts Above to do a 54321 video. Uh, I don't quite understand, I've missed this phenomena. I watched Chris's, I don't think I've seen anyone else do it or I forgot. But uh, it's about picking your top five um, miscellaneous things that you enjoy that has to do with shaving. So I've done that four sections, starting backwards with the uh, stuff you have on after you shave. So after shaves, etc. Basically, top five. Not a big category for me. I don't use um, that many. But these are my top five and I really enjoy all of them. Starting from number five is Stetson. I don't know, this is... People, people my age used this in high school, I think, in America. It smells old man-ish to me. I, I just can't not like it. It's pretty cool. It's... Uh, Stetson. It's also a, a pretty good aftershave in terms of treatment. So that's number five. Number four, Hega, the blue Hega Uppsala. Now this is, a, a, in my opinion, it's cheap, but it's a killer aftershave in terms of treating your skin. The scent doesn't last for very long, but it is very nice. Um, so this is more, this is more aftershave treatment product than a scent thing. Number three is, is both and it's Asian Plum from Ariana and Evans. So I'm fairly new to these sophisticated uh, Iris, uh, artisan uh, aftershaves. This is, uh, this smells so good. It smells really, really nice. It smells like, um, you know, an American who's taken Japanese scents and just made it a bit too much, like some <laughs> Americans do. But it's in a cool way. So uh, it takes something sophisticated, Asian, North, North Asian, and makes it spectacular, Americana style. And this is also um, probably the best aftershave in terms of performance that I have. Um, it's long lasting in terms of scent as well. It's on all day, basically. Number two is, uh, is not an aftershave, it's an eau de toilette, eau de parfum, something like that. Um, that I, this was the only thing I used for several years and I used it every day. It's Creed's Himalaya. Fantastic, the, the, the best smelling thing that I have and I can't describe it. It's uh, the the base notes, the the ones that are on. Is it base notes or I don't know the scent scent stuff? But the one that's on most of the day after the initial thing is is really good. And and this is one of very few I get compliments for. And then my number one scent is also Creed. It's Green Irish Tweed. Um, this smells really nice, uh, of course, but primarily I, I just feel freaking cool when I put it on. You feel like, like the icons that have used it before, you know, movie stars and, and so on. It's, it's really cool and, and it's uh, my favorite scent, the one I use most days, nowadays. Okay. Brushes, also not a huge selection. I have uh, 
15 brushes. That's all I have. So I'm going to pick five. Well, well, actually, oh shit, I was going to, uh, I forgot, I forgot one, but yeah, yeah, I know. First of all, honorary mention outside the list because it's not that good a brush is the Google Art Dead Slash with a stash. Just so cool looking. Tim Schall has one as well. Um, so that's that's that. Number five, Simpson, Pure Badger, the Duke. I have a chubby too, which doesn't really make it onto the list. This thing I really like, and it just lost the hair. It's uh, it's small, it's it's tiny actually, but it does the job really well. And uh, if you, if I want a badger brush for traveling, and I want a small one, this is the one I pick. Um, but it's it's fine as a standard brush as well. Really, really good stuff. A little bit of scrub for a badger, because it's not the super Manchurian whatever. It's it's a pure badger, and it's great. And it's number five. Number four on the list is not here. It's uh, elsewhere. So that's a bit dumb. But it is my number four, and it is the twenty six millimeter extra density two band badger brush from Masetto. Masetto, um, I, I just have one, um, but I've heard from a lot of people with a few exceptions, people, really snobby people think it's, well, it's not always perfect. It's, it's uneven in quality, which I'm sure is true. So sorry for calling you snobs. I'm sure you're watching. Um, it's cheaper than a Simpson, much, much cheaper. So quite obviously the quality can be a bit even. I've been lucky, it's phenomenal. Really, really good and cheap, okay? Number three on the list is GA7, Jeff Anderson out of America made this. I got this from Oscar Prativa. So uh, beautiful, maybe my best looking raise, uh, brush. And super good, two band, badger as well, really nice, uh, a go-to, never disappoints me, and it looks good. Number two of the list, <clears throat> actually, is a synthetic, and it's, it's this one. This is from Matti Lindholm, ML Shaving Supplies, as we call him. He turned the handle, this is, ooh, is it oak? Matti, correct me if I'm wrong. And in that he, he puts a 24 millimeter uh, synthetic knot from Maggards and, and the knot is really good. I have four, four or five synthetics, which uh, all of them are actually, I'm pleased with all of them. This is by far the best one. It's also good looking in terms of handle. It's a long handle, longer than any anyone else that I have, which is nice because you can work it in tricky areas like you know narrow bowls etc it's it's great to to hold and it's a tremendous performer number one on the list is my only uh, fancy brush that i spent a bit of money on it is the paladin in graphite color it's called something which i can't remember i don't know if it's written not the winston 20 oh, 26 yeah I think it's 26 millimeter two band badger um, got this from Stefan Jedlund and um, it's just terrific it, it's low-key in terms of appearance but it is it is very nice and in terms of performance it's the best one I have oh all this talking okay Soaps. That was the trickiest because I that's what I have the most of. <laughs> so but in the end of the five I picked, um, I'm I'm quite pleased with that. Number five, Barrister Man's Diamond. Barrister Man, I I can't remember which soap base this is because they have different <laughs> and they're supposed to be different. It's really good in terms of performance, but the, 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 
the greatest thing is the scent. So this is, um, this, the scent is made to, to represent baseball. So you have, you have dirt, quite a bit of dirt. You have grass, uh, popcorn. I can't remember what else is supposed to be in there, but it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, not a beautiful scent but it's a cool scent and it, it brings me back to the, the few baseball games I've been to baseball and I know nothing about baseball uh, in my book is the best the best sports game out there on so many levels not least aesthetics so number five number four Mitchell's wolf hat um, looks like a sheep's brain, which maybe it is. Maybe that's why it's so good. Almost no scent apart from really thick milk or something. It's not a, not a very pleasant scent, but it's a killer soap. It is a great soap. I like it. I can lather it properly. And it supposedly has the original formula from 1893, which is pretty cool. It's also from Bradford, um, which is nice. I used to live in Leeds, which is very close. The two towns are are joined by the airport, more or less. So, so pretty cool, you know. Um, old school, um, old old school Yorkshire. Doesn't even smell like curry, which it should if it's from Bradford. But that's my number four. Number three on the list, and I'm, I'm sorry I only had this ugly mug. I, I keep having soaps from this maker in the house, but I also keep giving them away. I've given three away this year. The Swedish Witch. She makes, Sara makes two soap bases, basically. A, a tallow and lanolin one, and a vegan. This is the, the tallow and, and lanolin. And not a lot of scent, very little scent in Sarah soaps in general. There is uh, a bit of rosemary, a bit of, I don't know, and I don't know what it's supposed to be, but in terms of performance, the Swedish witch, killer soap. Numero dos is Asian plum again from Mariana and Evans. Won't talk so much about the scent and that's not the key thing uh, with this soap anyway. Well, with soaps in general, it's important that, that they smell nice, but not that important. So I have two out of five soaps on my list with very, very weak scents. <clears throat> so performance and history and stuff like that is more interesting. But this, this uh, is a phenomenal soap. This is the first one I have from a and &E. It was a gift from Dave Card. Uh, along with the aftershave splash and it's just beautiful beautiful so easy to lather it's it's incredible um, yep very happy with that number two on the list so uh, number one on the list and you who watch my latest video won't be surprised the best soap on my list is williams mug soap of course it is <laughs> one day maybe Number one soap on my list is Martin de Cantre's Vetiver. It's, uh, it's also the most expensive, so you, you really want it to be good. This is my best soap. Uh, it has a wicked, pretty strong vetiver scent, very distinct. Uh, it's really hard. So you can use it forever and ever. I saw a photo of someone using a, a jar like this and after two years using it pretty much every day, you could see the ring of death at the bottom, but it took two years. So I'll have this for much longer. I just hope the, the soap will keep. So my number one. Okay, finally, razors. The most important thing for me are the razors. So. Number five on the list is the leaf razor. I only use this for head shaves. 
but it is a terrific head shaver. I, I, I don't use these on the head. I very rarely use straights. I used to when I had a beard, but I, I don't very, very often because uh, I'm not very good at it. So for the head, typically I've been using uh, cartridge razors. And then I got this from Anton in the Swedish wet shaving group. And it's terrific. I'd say it's just as good as a Mac 3 or a, or a Fusion, which I prefer on my head. Um, but it is cheaper to use because you put half the blades in three. I have two because I don't know what the third one actually does. So uh, buying this, I get the money back in. Uh, if you buy, I get it back in a year because I got it second hand from from Anton. If you buy it full price, you get it, you get your money back in two years. Compared to. Uh, lowest cost Mac 3 blades that I can find so environmentally and everything and plus you know it's uh, it's more interesting and better looking than a cartridge so that's what I use nowadays number five number four on the list and it's hard to choose which are which is number one and number four so top four is my seven eighths weight and butcher wedge with a barber's notch um, horn handles with beautiful lead inlays transparent uh, can you see the scales so that's uh, it's a good performer but primarily it's it's a cool cool looking razor with a lot of history this is mid 1800s 1850 or something it's a bit crooked and I've mended it and it, it looks worn and it's it's beaten up, but it's, it's history and Sheffield steel. Okay, number four on the list, and this had to go on, obviously, is my R, R what do we call it? R-A-Ö racer from Andreas. Um, he... he he made this specially for me. I could design it, or well, he designed it, but he asked me questions, so it's custom. It's nine eighths. It's uh, what did we call it? Did we call it a wedge? It's not a true wedge. It's uh, yeah. but it's pretty wedgy, and he he has those cool angles. Can you see? You've seen it before if you've watched my videos on the spine and on the nose sort of diamondy um, brass on the inside. Just a wicked, wicked razor altogether. And so happy I got to, to purchase one. He's made very few that have been, have been sold because he's busy on his, on his proper job. Okay, number two on the list, and picking number one and two here was, was not easy. Number two on the list is my Philharmonica. It's worn, but you can still see brand this is stainless steel it's the yeah it's the only stainless steel racer i have that i well, one of two that i that i use regularly and really enjoy um phenomenal it's it's just a cool 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 racer you can see the logo thing on there as well needs a bit of a clean perhaps but this is six eights full hollow I've never had a bad shave. It's just Spanish engineering at its finest. Finally, and the last thing before I let you go, my number one racer, and it's maybe my ugliest, but I've decided it is it is my best. You've seen it quite often on the channel. It's Eric Anton Barry, which you can barely see because it's this is old and worn. Eight eighths, meat cleaver looking full hollow, which is a bit unusual for an 8.8. Um, standard plastic scales and everything, but I, and it was rusty as, as hell when I got it. And you can still see quite a bit of pitting. So it's not a beauty, but it is phenomenal. It really is good. And I enjoy it every time I use it. That's it, c'est tout. Das ist alles. Um, yeah, for what it's worth, those are my 
top five of miscellaneous things while wet shaving. So the, the honor of um, doing this and the next person to tag is Mr. Martin Roland at YMMV Shaves. So Martin, you're on, you're tagged, you're gonna have to do this. Um, and I'm looking forward to that because you have a lot of cool stuff. Thanks for watching guys and gals and see you soon. Stay sharp.